So basically, first we have done the inverse calculation, which is the M inverse matrix multiplication, inverse matrix multiplication transpose of X comma X. Then we multiply the whole thing with the X transpose and Y, we will get the so first we are calculating this part, which is the X transpose X to the inverse. Then we calculate the coefficients using the matrix multiplication formula. This matrix multiplication of inverse with transpose of X and Y. Matrix multiplication of inverse with matrix multiplication of transpose of X and Y. So two things in matrix calculation. First, you need to select the exact data range. Second thing, you should press control plus shift plus. Okay. Now. I want to calculate predicted CNG, predicted C, uh, CNT, 731 into 1, right? This is what 731 into uh, 731 into the final output is 731 into 1. This is 5 into 1, okay? So X is how much? 731 into 5, X into Y. So simple calculation. First, we need to select 731 into 1 cells. Just I select exactly 731 into 1 cells is equal to matrix multiplication of A2 colon E732 comma H2 colon 732 into uh, 731 into 5 multiplied by 5 into 1. Strike off the inners, you will get 731 into so close bracket, control plus shift plus enter. You get the predicted CNT. We get the exact predicted CNT what we get in the earlier calculation. So it's a simple matrix multiplication of X matrix with the coefficient matrix. X matrix is 731 into 5. Coefficient matrix is 5 into 1. The output will be 731 into 1. Okay. You'll get the output. Then from this, we calculate what is residual actual minus and you double click the value. You get the residual. And from this, we start calculating some square residual, some square error. Then we calculate the R square. So this is the back on back end calculation, which is involved in multiple linear regression. Any software, R, Python, SAS, SPSS, any software will use the same formulation to calculate the regression values. Okay. So this is what you call uh, uh, the basic calculation. Then uh, if you want to calculate till R square, which what Python will do. Python will do till R square, right? So first we will square the residual. So is equal to, to this is the residual, some square residual, total of this column. We have to calculate something called average of CNT. Average of CNT has to be calculated and that has to be detected from predicted CNT. Fred CNT, average of Fred CNT to the power of two. That means is equal to open bracket Fred CNT minus average of the predicted CNT. Now predicted CNT, we have to press F4 because the column is, and then we'll get the value. Then SSR is equal to sum of residual square. SSE is equal to sum of this. SST is equal to this plus this. Whole square is not there. Huh? Uh, I have not given whole square, right? That's why I got a lower value. Now, the formula of R square. So, 1 minus sum square residual by sum square total. Square is equal to 1 minus this divided by this 0 0.5805776. So if I go to the regression sheet, same value we got 0 0.5805776. Same value we got here in. So R square formula is this. Now, why we are doing all this thing is in this calculation, you will understand. In advanced algorithms, you will not be able to understand until unless you have a core mathematical background. So this is something which you can put an effort and understand the mathematics and calculation involved. But if you go into advanced algorithms, it will be difficult for to understand the calculus, mathematics behind it. I'll explain it to you, but it will be relatively difficult for you to explain to the recruiter. But if, if somebody asks you regarding mathematics and starts questions related to an algorithm, they will ask you which, math, which algorithm you are familiar in terms of math, mathematics and calculation, then you can 
at least half of the calculation you can tell them. The formula and the calculation method you can explain it to them. Because in data scientist role, if you are looking at data scientist role, they will definitely ask you at least one algorithm's mathematical calculation. And preferably they will ask you to explain. So if you are comfortable, look at multiple linear regression and binary logistic regression. That also I will tell you in Excel. In fact, every algorithm, wherever it is possible, I will show the calculations in Excel. Detailed step-by-step -step calculation in Excel. Except couple of iterative algorithms, which are difficult to calculate manually. Rest of the algorithms, I will explain them in Excel, the manual calculation. You need to, if you are targeting data scientist role, you need to have to explain at least one of them. Data analyst, not required. Data scientist, mandatory. Some square residual, some square total, and some square error. Some square residual. This is what we do not. We did the total of this column, which is square of residual. Some square residual. Sum of square of, sum of square of. This is sum of square of error. We are calculating the average error. This we call it as sum square total, which is the summation of SSRN. And the formula for R square is this. The formula for R square is this. Sum square residual, one minus sum square residual by sum square total. So that is what I have done. Sum square residual by sum square total. Adjusted R square also you can calculate, which is easy to do. So you can see here adjusted R square formula also. So adjusted R square is one minus one minus R square into N minus one. Capital N is total sample size 731 and N minus P minus one. P is number of independent variables, number of independent variables. So this is a little bit complex calculation. We'll break it and do it. So first we will calculate one minus R square N minus one, one minus R square into N minus one which is, is equal to open bracket, one minus R square into open bracket, 731 minus one, the numerator part. Then we will calculate the denominator part, which is N minus P minus one, 731 minus how many variables we have? Five, independent variables is five minus one, 725. Okay, now adjusted R square is equal to one minus open two brackets, this divided by this close two bracket, 0 0.5768529. We have marginal difference. I think uh, I made a mistake in number of independent variables is because one is intercept, no? it is only independent variables. Now we got it, 5782, 5782. This is how the adjusted R square is calculated. No, no, see, they will, in the interviews, they'll ask you, if you can explain till R square, that's enough. No need of adjusted R square and all. See, this is a very complex. There are still more calculations. Mean square error, mean square residual, F statistics, significance F, all those things are there. And then the P values of independent variables, T statistic, all are there. We don't need to do all those things. The basic formula, which is the X transpose formula, matrix formula, and how we calculate the predicted CNT, and then how we calculate the RS, R square. Till that is enough. Till that, more, most of the recruiters will be happy. Huh. See, if you can, see, generally they won't ask to show an Excel. They'll ask you to discuss in the interview. They'll ask you in interview, what is the formulation? How will you calculate predicted CNT? Uh, what is the residual? And what role residual plays? In this whole calculation, residual is a very important. So you have to understand the importance of residuals. Everything is dependent on residuals, right? R square is dependent on adjusted R square, is dependent on R square and sample size and the pop, what you call the variables. So you, if you can explain adjust R square formula also more than happy, but up to R square is compulsory. You have to mug up these formulas, basic formulas you have to mug up. If you are targeting data scientist position, data scientists, they will ask you to explain one algorithm of your choice mathematically. That is compulsory question. Now I will give you a lot of algorithms mathematically. We will explain like this. Now your choices you can choose. Some people choose decision tree which is based on probability and genie and entropy and information gain. They try to explain those calculations. If, if you're comfortable with decision tree calculation, you can explain decision tree calculation. Some people explain neural networks. If, uh, they explain the neural network calculation wonderfully. In PGA 17 and 20, we have two persons who can do neural network calculation very easily in Excel and they can explain it. So it's up to you, your learning ability and your learning in your 
don't create complexities choose the one which you can simply explain to the regular uh, recruiter in a very very simplistic terms okay so that is your choice which one you want to choose you have to decide i my job is i will explain whatever is possible in mathematical grounds i will explain it in mathematical algorithms almost all the algorithms i will explain except the iterative algorithm okay and i will also explain you the basic uh, cost functions basic derivatives and also related to those algorithms now if you are able to explain complex algorithms fine not else if you explain the basic algorithm also the recruiters are okay because once you join the job you will have a job another additional responsibilities to read research papers if you are joining as a data scientist you have to refer to research papers you have to refer to research articles conference presentations people come up with new ways right there is a new method of uh, now people are questioning uh, imbalancing of smot they are saying smot they developed a new technique now our recruiters want that uh, the companies want to adopt to that new technique so you have to read the research paper understand the mathematical formula and implement it your algorithm now you by by the time you learn it it is good one python and r both will be implemented you will be available the function will be available on github but you need to explain it to your uh, client right what exactly is the change what is happened so you need to have little bit mathematical for that purpose for almost all the algorithms i will explain you the mathematics behind it now whether you want to mug it up remember it's your choice because data scientist roles are high paid roles but they expect you to have the maths and stats also they are they expect you to work on complex and they ask you to learn those complex algorithms right so you it's your job to adapt and learn right sometimes you might get some help from youtube and other places sometimes you may not get you have to study it and learn most of the times you'll get it from youtube the algorithm explanation or you will find articles which will explain you step by step calculations and all so you have to be good in google search get those relevant materials study them and implement them in the work for that only they pay you salaries for now r square and adjusted r square we have calculated now if you look at our calculation see we have these calculations so sum square regression and sum square reg residual we have two values let me make them general to number msr mean square regression is equal to this divided by 4 sse divided by 4 mse sorry above one is mse e msr by 726 f statistic is equal to this divided by this 251.28 see almost closer to decimal difference is there we get it there then from this this is what ssr divided by 726 msc divided by msr significance f which is the p value right is equal to we have this comma degrees of freedom 1 is 4 degrees of freedom 2 is 726 you get the same p value which you get here in this is how the calculation goes on this is the background calculations any software will follow this formulation to do the regression analysis now in regression you need to remember the you need to remember the assumptions you need to remember the interpretation of the output you need to remember the concept of residual concept of r square and adjusted r square what is the difference between r square and adjusted r square? okay these are the important concepts you need to remember and if you are looking at a data scientist role and the position says you are you must be familiar with regression modeling then you need to remember the calculation also in the jds they expect they'll give you we want people who are expertise in regression or people in classification or people in cluster or people in natural language process people working with time series data so in job description you will be given clear expectation so according to that that concepts algorithms you need to remember at least one of them you should be able to explain at least one of them if you explain your chances of recruitment will be because as part of job you need to constantly understand and change in the casino data also i took only one class on a priori mba that market basket analysis a priori algorithm now they have to study the whole algorithm again what is lift what is confidence what is support what is the importance how do you interpret those metrics so i taught them long back now they are working on it after almost one and a half year now they are working on rules understanding what is lift what is confidence what is support they are still asked to work on it do so whatever you want something you have to do you have to generate those so they are still working on that that is a challenge and that is what gets you paid 
money. If it is a simple job, why would they pay you higher salaries? Little bit of complexity will be there. Little bit of effort has to be there. Then you'll get higher salaries. And in a year, you will be doing at least three or four projects. Rest of the time, you will be spent on learning or doing research paper analysis or writing something like that will happen. So not that you will work every day on complex projects. In a year, you will work on two or three complex projects. Rest of the time, you will get easy projects. But two, three complex projects, if you do well, you will be promoted to the next level and also your child, this will also be very high. So this is the background of multiple linear regression, the mathematical background of MLR. Okay, because we don't get all these things in Python or R, we just run the formula, you'll get the output. What happens in the back end until unless you go through it step by step? Okay, any doubts in this uh, calculation? I will share this sheet with you at the session. So SSR is first you have to do residual square. You have done residual square. You have done the square of residuals. First of all, did you calculate predicted CNT? No, right? You have calculated coefficients? No. So let, don't worry, I'll make you do. All of you put the data in this format first. How many people calculated? All of them have not calculated, right? No, just do put the data in this format. Temp, humidity, wind speed, and ca casual, four columns, and then add intercept one column, and then give some gap and put CLT. This will also improve your Excel skills, Excel skills also. So let us do this. First format the data in this, make the data in this form. Temp, humidity, wind speed, and casual. Before that, add a column, no gaps in between. There should not be any column gaps. That's what I'm asking you to choose only one. They will ask you to choose your own environment. They will ask me to explain only one. Then you have to look at YouTube videos or special videos which are there. Whatever I am uploading, you save them in your uh, system somewhere. Or the Google Drive access will be there for your data. You can look at those videos and learn. It's your job to learn. How do you learn? You have to learn it and you have to use it. That depends on the client work. Client work is what the project assign you requires regression, you have to learn it. If it requires classification, you have to learn. In this, they will only ask you to choose. Explain me an algorithm with mathematics. That is what we are seeing in all the data science. This is not algorithm. I have to explain this, we have different algorithms. Natural language processing, different algorithms. Deep we learning image processing, different algorithms. So, what the job profile say? In that job profile, you have to prepare one algorithm. Deep learning image processing, CNN, convolution neural network. You have to study the notes, understand the various formulas and theory involved in there. Go to the interview, they will ask you what is CNN, explain it to me, what are the various components in CNN, what is pooling, what is flattening, what is the neural network there, how do you calculate the level, the layers, and all, all those things they ask. It's all depends on the JD. Okay? And the JD will tell you what you have to learn. Accordingly, you have to learn and go to that. Once you join, you will be working on that particular algorithm for some time, and then you might change to another algorithm. Okay. Mm -hmm. strong in math report on any easy uh, same CBSE plus two uh, plus two parameters. Sorry, CBSE ten standard math matrix calculation derivatives and uh, you are going to call that one. So what is this process? CBSE ten ten standard is fine. Yeah, ten standard math is enough. Yeah, or K twelve US K twelve math is there. You will find all of this one online. K twelve US math is there. US math. Yes, high school K twelve. First standard or you know, what you call the K call test statement. They are also the same manner. Lots of videos and materials are there. We are looking at India, say by use, there are two, lot of math, Q math, Q math is there, there are the is there, by is there. Where do you see videos, concept, calculation, practice problem, everything so you can do based on. So this is based on matrix. You can try do matrix calculation. You can try. Calculating inverse of a two by two matrix first, and then calculate three by three matrix inverse. That's all we can do. So you can understand that this is not a But it is only for understanding. Understand. See, it's all about how you have to explain it. You have to explain to the recruiter that you have some understanding of the algorithm. Because without understanding, if you do something wrong in data, one recruiter told I sent a candidate regression data, he implemented last regression data. That is fundamentally wrong. Regression is different, the classification is different. You cannot implement a classification as well as one regression. Software in here also. You will get software in software. But that is fundamentally wrong. And that recruiter told me at least 20% of the candidates in the They on a regression data, they implement logistic regression and it means, which is absolutely wrong. Maybe they were taught only classification. And then they are implementing that only what I was doing. But actually, it's a regression data. How can you implement the classification? You will get also the information. You will get also the information. No software issue is there. But it's absolutely necessary. The other thing for you how we decide anybody which one, which one, which is dependent. Based on the data type of the dependent, 
What data type I use? Is variable use regression? Data type is of dependent variable is numerical, continuous, stored and normal. Then we use classification and dependent variable is non numeric, binary, or multi. Can it simplistic decision you have to learn? Dependent variable is this, either this numeric or not. That's all. You decide whether you can implement the shape or that. Cutting more than that. If it is numerical, or oh, it is If it is not numerical, you will implement that. That is usually based on basic statistics up to hypothesis testing and all the other descriptive side. EDA and intervention statistics is what we will have on side. We are not going data pre processing really We will not go in with ML. ML will be separated as later. After completion of three more algorithms, both in relation and classification, that we will do an ML. Very next month, January. Right now, this week we will not conduct it. Marks will be conducted in January along with the iteration test. Because by the time you will have some understanding of algorithm, you will have multiple data sets. You will have understanding, right? Then I can do it. That way, so this will be based on uh, test. Test and a implementation. I will give a data set. On which you will be doing the things. Uh, that will be later. No. No, not, not next week, next month. Next month, I will do more. So, in this time, you have to do this first. And as you have a data set, where you have to perform tasks, where you have to do where you have to do the implementation analysis, and you will be asked to do it with this. And you have to do that time to do it. You have to start it. You have to do it. You have to do it. Follow up with the data for that. Structure. Okay. Yeah. 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 That is not true. When it is some dependent variable, we have to be careful. If it is any other dependent variables, you can choose one among. Okay, all of you formulated the data like this. That I will give you the transpose thing. Now you want to get that. Right click on the cell, format cell. Ah, that's right. Select first five by five cell. All of you select five by five cell. Five rows and five columns. Once you have formatted the data, Empty cells, five rows and five columns. Exactly 25 cells you have to select. And also write down it, uh, write down your data range. Write down your data range, x value range. A2, all of you copy from paste from A2 only, right? Or anybody copied and pasted from B, B2 like this. All of them from A2 only. No, intercept you have to add. Add intercept there to the first column, intercept to the last time. Not select remaining all the cells. No, no. No, don't use control check. You have to use shift and uh, down arrow. Use shift and down arrow. Come to the next one. What is shift and down arrow? You have to do one time. Interesting. Now, once you have to insert, you have to add one different column. Insert and add once. Intercept. Constant. Intercept is the point at which the straight line touches the y axis, right? Intercept is constant. For all the both, there will be only one. The whole thing can be that's why constant one value will be called. Intercept is always called that constant. It can be one or no, no, it has to be one only. It has to be one only. If you give zeros without intercept model, will come. If you give ones with intercept model, will come. Intercept can be either zero or one. Zero means model without intercept, which is over the decadent model. In business, we use models with it. So intercept should always be one. The constant value. People have already set it into intercept. Select exactly five rows and five columns. Then the formula. And in first open bracket M bar. Open bracket A to column E731 or 732, right? Comma A to column E732. Those two brackets. Control plus plus enter. Is equal to M inverse open bracket M my open bracket transpose open bracket A to column E seven thirty two close bracket comma again A to column E seven thirty two close two brackets control plus shift plus enter. Ah, that's M one M one matrix multiplication there. Nah, is equal to M inverse open bracket M my open bracket transpose open bracket. transpose of X with 
First select 5 by 5 rows. 5 rows and 5 rows. What is the formula now? Fx bar is equal to MD inverse. No, no, not that. You have to. Yeah. No, no, you have to. Again, the data range. Data set is very strong. Okay. Is equal to MD inverse. MM. MM is like the test monitors. No problem. MM is new and key. Transpose TRM FQRC. Now select the data range A2 time A2 small letters A2 column E732. Again, A2 E732. Close two brackets, one more bracket, two brackets. Now. Control press, press enter. Control shift and enter. What a value. Main error. There is some non data in your uh, mistake. Main error is the mistake inverse E3 and inverse INERC. Okay. Yeah. Uh, double click three letters, you will double click. It's not enter. You select one row extra. That's why it's called the error. Who have completed three things like this on top? It took that time to four issues. We will calculate that one. This is you've got extra. One. Yeah, one uh, and then copy it. Control C. Now, no, no, you can't just come to the center. Now, go back. Go back to the center. Control C. Now, come to the next one. Okay, that's it. Control C. Now, come to the next one. Okay. Should we have done the inverse matrix to the Select that five by one cells. Now select the same letter. Now go back to the formula. You have to change the formula A to wherever you see B now. This is the Now the second formula is this five into one is equal to M1. Select the inverse matrix. The inverse matrix will select comma transpose A2 column E732. Close bracket, comma. Whatever your Y variable, C and D variable, whichever column you have now. Whatever the column which you have placed at the CMT variable. This is the CMT variable column. So let us say my CMT variable is in column, uh, my CMT variable is column K, which is K2 column seven, uh, K732. You check your CMT column. Where is your CMT column? Which are those are your K, right? You can do that exactly. You have in CMT. Be careful with that. And wherever you have a CMT variable, that column. You have to fill here. Rest of the formula, you will need M1, your inverse function. M1, A2 column E732, comma, your dependent variable column, close two brackets, control press, press, enter. So, why don't you have to calculate now? Select here. No, 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 not that. Select the formula bar. Again, M1, now give the image. A2, transpose of A2 column E732. Exactly five words in five. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Ah, good morning. I was in a class. Tell me. All right. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Thank you. No, no, that session, I think uh, what happened is that one session we will conduct on December 12th or 13th. Okay, cancel, please. Because 13th, what is happening is I want all students to be present on that day so that I can conduct the online exam. There is a test I'm conducting them for 20 marks. Uh, so 20 marks exam I want to conduct. 
13th, I think uh, people are saying 13th December. I told them 4.30 to 6 slot will be there, no? last class. Yeah, I think now students are not there. Yesterday, only four people attended. Only four people were there yesterday. So they said their people are not there in the campus. So they wanted it to happen after December 12th. Okay, so just I will ask them to get in touch with you. Either December 12th or 13th, uh, 4.30 to 6 session, I will conduct an online test uh, for 40 minutes, 20 marks uh, evaluation. And then uh, uh, that will be also be the last session. Today's session, please cancel it, okay? Tomorrow also, no? I think only one session is left, right? Yeah, that's what students know. That we will schedule on December 13th, 4th, 13th to 6th. Okay, so I will complete all the evaluations. December 10th also, I have given a date for submitting the evaluations and all, so that I can complete all the evaluations and submit the marks and all. Yeah, I can cancel, please. Yes. For dollar signs, FN plus F4. Absolute self-referencing. FN plus F4. FN button on the left side will be there. FN plus F4 will insert two dollar signs. Absolute cell difference. Predicted count. Uh, predicted count is simply matrix multiplication of X with your coefficients. Wherever you have calculated coefficients, that is the formula. Matrix multiplication of A2 column E732 and the coefficients matrix. Predicted count is simply the multiplication of the X matrix with the coefficient matrix. But before that, you have to select the whole column. Select the whole column and then implement the formula. So, for predicted count, first you need to select the whole column, then implement the formula. Then this is the formula which you need to, no, no dragging. Matrix calculations, no dragging. Matrix calculations, you cannot drag. Predicted CNT is ML, X comma coefficients, X comma coefficients. But first select the column range, then control plus shift plus enter. Got it all of the predicted CNT? then rest of the residual and residual square you calculate and this is the formula for predicted cnt thing right
फॉर्मुला एन इज नंबर ऑफ ऑब्जर्वेशन हाँ सेवन थर्टी वन ना एन इज नंबर ऑफ ऑब्जर्वेशन पी इज नंबर ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंट वेरियबल्स एंड इन डेटा यू विल सी ट्रेन टेस्ट एंड data description and sample submission download all the four files in data tab you will see train.csv test.csv sample submission.csv and data description.txt download all the files create a folder save all the files in that folder this is a very popular competition we will be using advanced regression models but it also includes lot of data pre processing related so kegel.com register with your gmail id the name of the competition is house prices advanced regression techniques in the data section you will see the data train test sample submission and data description download all four files save them into a folder so we have already worked on big math data right we worked on big math data if you remember data pre processing we have worked on big math data where we discussed in detail data pre processing right you can open the big math data file cell run all cells that data pre processing on big mart data we have done right you can open the file where we have done data pre processing on big mart data big mart data data pre processing file where we have worked on big mart data remember all of you have this big mart data file now in big mart data at the end we have split the data into dependent variable and independent variables right we have split the data into dependent variable and independent variables just open the notebook run all the cells okay all of you have that open that big math file data pre processing file sklearn dot linear underscore model linear regression from sklearn dot linear underscore model import linear regression give a short name reg is equal to linear regression null brackets give a small small name to the regression reg model is equal to reg dot fit will fit the regression model x comma x is our independent variables matrix y is our dependent variable dot fit will perform the regression reg model dot score x comma y this is what we call it as okay we got the r square of 0.50 is it in the range what is the range for r square 0.60 to 0.95 the model has failed the model has underfitted or the model has failed why because if you see on top we have the outliers that is why the model has because i didn't do anything for uh, what you call treating the outliers okay if outliers assumption is not but most of the times basic model will fail okay but let us still go with the prediction okay let us understand what it means logarithmic transformation i told you na so let us say reg model 2 Is equal to reg dot fit x comma n p dot log of logarithmic transformation reg model two dot score x comma n p dot log of y. See r square is closer to zero point. It is comparatively better, right? To the previous model, once we do a logarithmic transformation, a increase in r square is there. It is now closer to zero point six zero. what you call threshold so logarithmic transformation will slightly improve but still we are below the 0.60 threshold so here i have done transformation of y logarithmic transformation of y 
Now, what uh, let us say we got an R square of 0 0.50. Now it has improved to 0 0.5719. So to some extent, the transformation has worked and corrected the R square, but still it is under the underfitting range only. Yeah. Now we have defined in the last session only, right? Here. In the once the data pre-processing completes, once you define y and x, y is your dependency. The processing will only complete. Once you have defined defined a y and x, upon that only the data preprocessing will be over. Till the point you are not able to define your y and x, your data preprocessing is still under the process. The moment you define your y and x, y is your independent variable, x is all other variables as independent variables matrix. One matrix of x and one matrix of y. X comma y. We have defined them here, no? Item outlet sales as a dependent variable, then we dropped it from the variables and remaining all are considered as independent variables. Ah, after that, you can check why uh, thing you can check and you can see outliers and all. See, we have done the square root transformation also. That also gave us a better option, right? Square root transformation also gave it. So I will do that also here. Rec model 3 is equal to, see, so easy. Model building is nothing. The problem is getting the data to shape of once you get the data in X and Y, you can write any algorithm and it runs in seconds. It runs in seconds. The only headache is bringing the data to that shit. Cleaning, pre-processing, all the creation of new variables, deletion of variables, all these things you come at the end, you have to have the data in a proper structure. Reg dot fit X comma NP dot SQRT of Y. Square root transformation. Reg model three, dot score x comma np dot sqrt of y square root transformation did not work well it is only giving an r square of 0 0.55 whereas logarithmic transformation at least gave up to 0 0.57 but still it is our below our required it is still below our required range of 0 0.60 this we call it as under fitting under fitting under fitting happens in regression because of outliers, these are the reasons why underfitting. If you do it again and again, you'll get infinity values. Infinity again is a problem, right? If you do log on log, it goes to infinity. That's a value invalid number. R square will tell you whether the model is underfitted or not. Root mean square is a comparison metric. Once you have model is above 0 0.60, then only we'll calculate RMS. See, your model is above 0 0.60. Okay, let's say you got 0 0.70. You are not satisfied. You want to, you rework their variables. You created a new model that went up to 0 0.72, right? There's an increase. Now you calculate RMSE to this and also calculate RMSE for 0 0.72 model to decide which model among this, the model that has the lowest RMSE will be the best model. It is choosing between models. Once your basic model is fit above the metric, once it is above 0 0.60 only, you will do RMSE. Below 0 0.60, RMSE is not to be done. See, there are two different values, right? In R square, we are just finding the primary metric, whether the model is, that is only we will get. RMS is deciding whether the model is good or not. Ah, comparative metric. You compare RMSE of different, different models, and then you will find out which is the best fit model. Yeah, two models or more than two models, you have to do RMS. R square is common for all regression models. Ah, only in regression only, we'll get R square. We have different metrics. That is classification. Where, yeah, confusion matrix is used for metric calculation. You didn't put brackets next to linear regression. Missing positional argument with you missed brackets here. Check. See here. Mike Nak combined DF clean is. Oh, I also use scaled only. Yeah, we have used scaled only. Then label and code. We have used label and code. Then how come he's getting 44? There will be only one dependent variable. Yes. Only one dependent variable should be there. Uh, yeah, problem statement or the business objective. No, they will give you a business objective. You have to identify based on the business objective. I want to predict sales. Then you will take the total sales as the dependent variable. You might not have total sales in the data. Sales of India, sales of uh, uh, America, sales of UK. Like that, you have different, different sales. You have to combine them with total sales. You have to calculate and then make it as dependent variable. Or if C says I want sales of only India, then you will take only sales of India, independent variables related to India only, and then you build the model. Because independent variables also will change. In India, if you have region, we have four regions, North, East, West, and South. If you go to UK, there is only two regions, North England and South England. That's all. There is no East and West England. 
only two will be there. So if you go to US, they have a different terminology. Pacific coast, Western, uh, what you call uh, Atlantic coast, central, and like that, you have different classifications. So independent variables will also change. So if they want you to predict American sales, you have to take independent variables only related to India sales, only related to India. That you have to use SQL and separate the data. Total sales, you will take all the data into one, take all the independent variables, and then you can predict. Like that, it will be there. So how they define the business problem? Based on that, you have to identify the variables. Once you identify the variables, go to client and say, your business problem, these are the variables. If he says yes, then go to pre-processing and choose. Cleaning. Then you clean and pre-process and do all those things. Then go back to the client and say, this is the pre-processing we have done. Take this, then you go to model building. So that is how you have to do. Without client permission, we will not do anything because it will again waste of time. It says, no, this is not what I want. That is what they say. To avoid this, your business problem is this. I have identified these variables. Are you okay? If he says yes, go ahead. If he says no, more variables to be added, what else? You take from him, add those variables, then go ahead and do the process. It has to be related to dependent. It has to be related to dependent. Yes, they, the, don't ask me, those get asked. Me. So like customer IDs or sometimes uh, cost center, something, some variables will come in your data, which you can delete, them, which, are, which you can say, I am ignoring because they are not relevant to model building. So that you will get experience as you work on data. Once you work on different, different data, by end of this course, you'll understand what type of data, what type of variables. Uh, positive skewness. If it is positive skewness, square root or logarithmic. If it is negative skewness, exponential or power. For independent variables, scaling. Standard scaling or normalization, depending upon your requirement. So different transformations for different variables. Independent variables is scaling. Uh, dependent variable is transformation logarithmic or exponential look at the notes you will find it. the notes is there two three four not four two or three only will work you don't go to four also two or three square or cube negative uh, negative r square how will you get for which all of you got the same values right r square See, the whole thing is too far. Why we are doing this whole thing for prediction? Test spread, or let us say, reg test is equal to reg model dot predict big mart test dm reg test predict is equal to reg model dot predict big mart test dm so we have got the predicted values for oh is reg model log no why only no one one second eh? i'll scroll down now once you got the predicted values pd dot data frame reg test predict dot two underscore csv reg dot csv write it into a csv file pd dot data frame the predictions predictions i am writing it into a csv file now if i go to the folder my hackathon folder big mart sales see there is a file called reg dot csv which is written i am opening with excel so i got the values predicted these are the predicted values on test data now i have the sample submission file here okay i will copy these values 
I will paste them in sample submission, the row of item outlet cell, control S. Now I will go to analytics with ya. So I have already really registered to this Big Mart sales. Okay. In Big Mart sales, you see something called solution checker. Click on solution checker, upload the CSV file, sample submission file you have to upload. Go to the place. So my data is in hackathon, Big Mart sales, sample submission, write a description as reg or simply write MLR. No, uh, we are not going to show any code on the leaderboard. My RMSE is 2,763. I got an RMSE of 2,000. Okay. So if you look at the best guys leaderboard, the lowest RMSE is 1,127. Why we got highest RMSE? Because we didn't get basic R square, right? That is the reason why we got very large RMSE. Because our model has underfitted. If the model underfits, error will be. That is why our RMSE is very, very high. Look at the competition leaderboards, 1,127. I have used my best model is 1,158 gradient boosting model. It is around 2,261 rank. Okay. So this is what happens. If your model underfits, your RMSE will be very, very, right? You can compare your thing. So after every model, we'll put it in this competition side and we'll see how it changes. For your basic understanding, I have done various model submissions for multiple linear regression. I got 2,763. But if I do a decision tree, 1,160. If I do a random forest, 1,158. 1,024 with random forest. 1,582 with decision tree, C3, 1,163. Again, decision tree, 1,174. RMSs. How they drastically change once you go to the higher level or advanced models. Okay. For your understanding, once we we'll submit every time, once you do it. Now the submission process is this. First, you predict, then convert it into a data frame, write it into a CSV file. You will see it in the folder, which you have given the partner in the IO. There the file will be there, open it, copy it. Now, co don't copy the first zero. Below zero, there will be values. Copy them, paste them in sample submission below item outlet cells. Do not touch the first two columns. Do not touch the headers. Below item outlet cells, second row, you paste the values. Control C, Control V, save it. Go to analytics with your solution checker, upload the CSV file in description, write multiple linear regression, and then add solution. You'll get your RMSE score. Okay. So that is the process. You want it here, right? You can take a snap because other guys want them. Yeah, you can take a snap of this code. Huh? Yeah, guys, this is the process of predicting on test data. You, re you remember we didn't have a dependent variable in test data. We are using the train data model to predict on. And that prediction we copy it into the CSV. Then you copy those predictions into sample submission. Then you upload it into the competition. Then you will know your how accurate your prediction. Now this is telling our predictions and the actual values are very different because our model has under. So after this, we will build a decision tree model. Next week uh, we will do that query and then we will do the model and then we'll submit it. Then we will see how drastically our RMSC changes. There the R square also will be more than the point. Base model, next model, next model, next model, and then finally, whichever model gives you the best accuracy, that is your final. Whoever wants to submit, you can submit. First thing, R square. First start square. Because we don't get at the start square anymore. I mean, Excel, uh... Excel, we have to look at Excel. In all statistical software, Excel is R. Statistical software. R, SCFL, SAP, Excel. But in Python, only R. How many